Welcome back to Zuko Builds. This week we're taking a break from the shop upgrades, the shop projects, and we're building an order I got from my Etsy shop, which is an adjustable laptop desk. You can adjust it to different heights all the way down, still nice and flush with some hinges. Super simple, but a super fun build, and I think it's gonna be a fun one. So let's get right into it. I'm making this whole build out of scrap 1x10s that I had and the tabletop is going to be 12 inches wide or deep by 24 inches long. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut the 1x10s to length and then rip them down to 6 inches on the table saw. This will give me my 12 inch top. Next we can glue the top up and if you're tired of getting glue squeezed out all over your clamps. A good little trick is to put packing tape where the glue joints will be. I had a pretty busy schedule this day so I'm going to glue this top up, let it set for the entire day, come back tomorrow and we'll start on the base. Now that the glue has completely set, the next thing we have to do is get the exact measurements of the top to make the skirt for the base. Once I know the measurements, I'll go ahead and take these strips over to the miter saw and cut them to size. And I made these strips just out of the cutoffs from the 2x10 we cut and I cut them down to 1x2s. As you can see here, everything should sit nice and flush to the ends and the edges of your desktop. To assemble the skirt, I'm just using butt joints with glue, and this was already the next night, so I'm going to let this sit overnight. By the time I get back to it tomorrow, this should be completely sturdy with just the glue itself. After you make sure everything is nice and square, go ahead and clamp it into place and if you want to start working on it right away, you can fasten it with some screws or some nails, but I'm just going to let this sit overnight and come back to it tomorrow. Once the glue has completely set, go ahead and remove your clamps and give everything a nice light hand sand and then we can start sanding the desktop. Now's a good time to say I'm at about 150 subscribers now, so I just wanted to give a big thanks to everybody watching and interacting with the videos. It really does help the channel grow, and if it's not too much to ask, turn that bell on so you're notified when I post a new video. You guys rock. The next thing we have to figure out is how wide we want the part that'll be adjustable and how wide we want the part that'll be glued to the base. I want this to fit a 15 inch laptop comfortably, so I'm going to mark 15 inches and that will still give me 9 inches to place your notebook or your coffee and not worry about anything moving. Then go ahead and cut on your mark and this will give you your two pieces that will make the whole desktop. What I'm doing here is making sure everything sits nice and flush and then I'll go ahead and remove the part that's adjustable, hold the stationary part in place and strike a line with a chisel or a marking knife so I know where to glue. Then just go ahead and glue down that section that you marked off and fasten it with some brad nails or even some screws if you want to cover it up but I'm just adding glue and some brad nails and I'll fill the holes with wood filler. Then you'll want to get the inside measurement of your skirt so we can cut a runner which is going to make this whole tabletop adjustable. You'll see what I mean in a second. Once we have that runner cut out, I'll go ahead and eyeball the center, mark a line on both the runner and the skirt making sure everything is nice and square and this will just give me a reference for when I glue up. Alright guys, so I went ahead and made some marks for the half, I'll call them half moons we're going to cut out or drill out. This is for the bar to rest inside, that way you can adjust your tabletop to different angles. 
I measured one inch from the end and then two inch and then every inch and a half and then one inch from the last mark. I just found that this gives me the most adjustability as far as your angle for your tabletop goes. And I marked about an eighth inch from the edge just to give the Forstner bit some room to bite on because if you place your center of the Forstner bit right at the, the edge, it's more likely going to push your piece away and it's not going to come out as clean. So I'll go ahead and clamp these down and then drill them out. So while I was drilling these, I realized that my workpiece was still getting pushed away from the Forstner bit. So what I ended up doing was just adding a backer board out of scrap wood, clamping that down. That way my workpiece had nowhere to go. I went ahead and gave all of those half circles a nice light hand sanding just to knock down all of those sharp edges. Next I'll go ahead and set my miter saw to 15 degrees to cut the legs for this desk. After you cut one side, you want to make sure to flip your piece over so that your long end of your miters are opposite of each other. Before attaching the legs, we still have some work to do, so let's go ahead and flip this desk over and I cut these little blocks out of just some scrap wood. These can be any size. This is going to be where the bar that makes the desktop adjustable will rest in. You'll understand more what I mean in a second, so let's just get these glued into place for now. I'm just marking equal distances from the runner that's placed in the middle and I'll go ahead and use wood glue and CA glue with accelerator to hold them in place before I fasten it down with some brad nails. And silly me, I forgot to drill the holes through these that we need to fit the bar in. So I'm knocking them off and doing this over again. So just make sure to drill through the center of both of these blocks. To make sure the holes are in the same location of both blocks, I just stacked them on top of each other and drilled through both of them at once. Alright guys, so we have these blocks fastened into place. I actually added a couple of brad nails just to really hold them down. But to make this laptop desk adjustable, we need something that's going to fall into these half circles that we drilled out to prop it up. To do that, I'm using this 3 16 inch round bar and we have to bend it. Let's see, I'll grab a straw to demonstrate. We're gonna have to bend it so that it hooks into either side of these blocks, just like this. Then it'll bend up towards the top or the far side of the desk, lay across on the bottom. I think I'll mortise out a good chunk so that everything can rest flush and then connect on the other side as such. So I don't really work with metal but this is super lightweight pretty bendy so I think I'm just gonna put it in my vise really clamp it down and then tweak it so that it's 90 degrees coming out so I'll have to do that four times. Um, yeah let's try it out. And here I'm just getting measurements from the holes that we drilled to the top of the skirt so I have a rough measurement of where to bend on the steel rod. I then went ahead and just marked with the sharpie where I want my bends to be and I'll clamp it down nice and tight in my vise and bend it till it's about 90 degrees. Then take the measurement from the hole that you drilled in the block to the top of the skirt and mark another line. Then just rinse and repeat those steps until you have a rectangle with this steel rod. Once you have that rectangle, you'll have to cut off the excess rod and to do this, I think an angle grinder would have been a lot easier, but I don't have one so I used a reciprocating saw with a metal cutting blade and this was kind of disastrous because of all of the vibration, so I think I might grab an angle grinder or a Dremel with the cutoff wheel. The method I'm using still got the job done, but I really didn't like doing it. There was so much vibration and it just didn't feel clean or safe. Next, just take a file and smooth down those sharp edges. 
As you can see, this came out a bit too long, so I ended up cutting off about a quarter of an inch on either side of the bar, rebending everything, and that gave me a much better fit. Oh yeah, this is much better. We still need to mortise out a chunk on the skirt so that this bar sits nice and flush to everything. And to do that, I'm just making a mark on the outside of these bars on the skirt so I know where exactly to cut. To do this, I'm just using a small trim router and I added a backer board just to give my router more surface to lay on and that'll prevent more chip out on the back side. You can also do this by hand, it'll just take a lot longer, but what you want to do is get the depth of the rod itself and go slightly above that with your bit, that way everything sits nice and flush. Once you hog out most of the material with your router, I'll go ahead and come back with the chisel to come right up to my line and get everything nice and square. With that all mortised out, you can see this desk top is nice and flush. All right guys, so the next thing we have to do is attach the hinges and this is what's gonna actually allow the desk top to adjust. So we'll place them on the front side. This is gonna be the side that'll rest towards your body and you want them to open up towards you. Um, hope that makes sense. So I'm just gonna line them up, I'm gonna kinda eyeball them equal distances from the center. You can actually measure this out if you want, but nobody's really gonna see these. Then I'll go ahead and mark where I want them. Right there for that one. Same thing for the other side. And now we have a reference for where these are going. And we'll go ahead and mortise this out just as we did for the adjustment bar to rest. And once we get that done, we'll go ahead and sand everything, attach this runner, and then attach the legs and then finish it. Let's hop right into it. So once again, I just added a backer board for the same reason, and I'll go ahead and hog these out. I didn't get this part on camera, but I just cut down a small piece of scrap wood, and this is what's gonna be able to rest your laptop or your book or whatever on, so it doesn't come sliding off the desk when you tilt it up. I rounded over the sides that aren't going to be glued down and I'm just adding wood glue and of course CA glue with some accelerator to hold it in place and then fasten it down with more brad nails. With that in place, I'll go ahead and knock off all of those sharp edges just by hand. I have 220 grit wrapped around a sanding sponge and just going over it lightly. With the top pretty much done, we can go ahead and attach the legs. You wanna make sure the legs are angled so that they're coming out and away from the desk. And I'll clamp these down with some glue and fasten them down with some brad nails. My brad nailer didn't fit on the other side because I have the runner and those blocks in place. So I'll just go ahead and clamp these down and let them sit overnight. After that, go ahead and finish this how you please and you're pretty much done. It just smells so good. It's just so nice. All right. There you have it guys. Hopefully you followed along with this one. Like I said, it's pretty simple. There's just a few things like mortising out the hinges that if you're 
a beginner you can still do, but if you haven't done it yet, it might be kind of intimidating. That's a sneeze. <clears throat> that was my, my neighbor sneezing very loudly, but she's awesome, so it's okay. Where was I? Um, yeah, if you're a beginner and you haven't mortised out hinges yet, it might seem a little bit intimidating, but just take your time with it, especially if you're using a router. Just go nice and slow, and they're, they're super simple. Um, I do have an Etsy shop if you guys haven't checked that out yet. I'll leave the link down in the description as always. And hit that thumbs up if you liked the video, if you followed along. If you guys make any of the projects that I make for you guys, be sure to leave it down I want down in the comments. I, I do want to see all of the projects you guys are working on. Um, yeah, subscribe if you're not already. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Follow me on Instagram at Zuko Builds. I'll see you guys next week.